This is my homemade smoke machine. It's essentially a can with some oil in it, an electric element to get it hot. And you put air in through here, goes through a regulator that's from a barbecue, brings it down to 1.5 PSI, which is a safe pressure to use for EVAP. That goes into the can over here. Comes out of the can over here. I've got a little valve to turn it on and off. Down through the hose, you know, through a nozzle. You recognize that as a RTV tube nozzle. This other uh, valve and hose here, you may not really know what this is about. This is uh, essentially a manometer. It just measures pressure difference. It's got a tube that goes up and around and down and then back up to the atmosphere. And uh, right now with no pressure in it, the colored liquid, which is just water with uh, food coloring in it, you could use uh, like uh, windshield washer fluid, something lightweight with color. And I'll show you how that works. This control here regulates the voltage to the element. So I've got battery connections over here. You just hook them up to the car battery. Power comes into this dimmer. I got this off eBay for a few bucks and you can just turn it to adjust it. I never have had it over half. It gets plenty hot enough with that. Power goes down one side of the can. I've got little plastic insulators there so that the can doesn't get voltage or ground. And this is the other side and it goes back up to the control. We'll open up and open up the can. We'll take a look inside. We're going to take a look inside the can here. It's going to look a little mucky in there because I've got uh, dye in there. So what you see is where the wires come through the side of the can and then they coil up around a wick from an oil lamp and then it goes out through the other side of the connector. When you put voltage on that wire, it's going to get really hot and the oil that's soaked up by that wick is going to start smoking and the air pressure through the can will push it out through the nozzle. And that's essentially how the smoke machine works. I've used this uh, probably about 30 minutes so far in several cars and the oil hasn't gone down noticeably at all. Before I start up the smoke machine, I make sure the valves are closed so we don't have anything flowing yet. Especially this one to manometer because if you plug in the shop air, it'll just jump and spray water out. Connect up the battery. Make sure you got a good connection. Now this thing, whole thing runs at less than 10 amps. There we go. And you'll see I do have a fuse here. Where's the fuse? There it is, right here. Got a little inline fuse right there with a 10 amp mini fuse. And this is turned up halfway. And I'm gonna get the shop air connected. I gotta put the camera down. Okay, shop air is connected. Now we open this up and the smoke will start flowing. It only takes about 30 seconds for the smoke to go. Here's the nozzle. Now the smoke can be a little hard to see. There we go. I'm going to get a bright LED light and you'll be able to see the smoke. There we go. You can see the trail of smoke coming out. This doesn't work well with just a regular bulb. You want a really intense bulb like an LED. And it works best in a darkened shop. Oh, there we go. You can see it really good there. Another trick you can do to help spot the smoke is get out your lightsaber, your LED light. And just like in a James Bond movie, where they shine those beams through the room with the safe. There you go, there's smoke. Okay, I'm gonna show you how this manometer works. And uh, I think this is a very important part of the machine of the whole EVAP uh, diagnosis. You wanna make sure not only that you find a leak, but you also have to confirm there are no further leaks. So just because you find a leak doesn't mean that's the only one. So what we've got here, we've got pressure going into the system now. It's plugged into the shop air. Also, if you're doing EVAP testing, you shouldn't use shop air. I'm just using it for this. I'm just using it for this demonstration here. I actually have uh, the argon tank from my MIG welder with a hose to attach to here. So you're actually putting an inert gas into the fuel tank, not air and oxygen. Okay, so the valve is closed. This hose goes up and down and back up like I showed you before. And right now the levels are both the same here. I'm gonna open this valve slowly and you'll watch the levels go up 
one level will go up and one will go down. There it goes. Okay. Now when you're building yours, you want to make sure you got the right amount of fluid in here. Because if you don't have enough, the side that goes down, if it's down here, it'll just blow air up through here. If it's too full, it'll blow it out through the top. Okay, so I've already established that through trial and error. Okay, so right now, we have just air. I don't have the smoke machine wired up, powered up right now. So it's just air coming out of here. So what this fluid level represents is a 100% leakage through the nozzle. Now if I cap the nozzle, put my finger over the tip of it, it will rise. You'll hear that there's no sound now. And this represents a zero leak. So we just give it a moment or two to settle. And you'll see by the little paper clip there that I've done this before. That represents zero leakage. Um, you could use a magnet piece of tape, uh, bobby pin, clothes peg, anything that you can adjust a little bit makes it a little easier to work with. Okay, now most EVAP systems have a standard that you have to be under a 20 thou pinhole leak. That would be your small leak on your uh, check engine light codes. So what I've done, I've created a calibration for this. Essentially, it's a plastic tube with a 20 thou hole in it. And the hole is so small you can barely pick it up. So if I put that over the nozzle, this now, and I cap the end of the tube, this represents the maximum leakage that you can have in an EVAP system. So where's our level now? Look at that. So basically conveniently works out to the width of that loop in the uh, paper clip. So as long as it's above that, you're gonna pass. So let's give it a try out on this Cavalier. I've disconnected the EVAP line that goes uh, into the carbon canister in the fender and then out to the back of the car. So I'm going to plug in the uh, nozzle here from my smoke machine and we're just going to see if it's going to hold pressure. I'm not concerned about smoke right now, just pressure. Okay, so I just plugged it in and you'll see that it's now lower than what it should be. But just give it a moment because the air pressure in the tank has to build up. So as the tank fills with air, the fluid will come up. If your tank is almost empty, it'll take quite a while. But this car doesn't have doesn't have much airspace in it. So it fills up pretty good. Look at that. We're essentially 100% sealed. No problems with the uh, sealing on this tank. Okay, we're going to actually test the system with a smoke machine. This is my argon tank from my MIG welder. Connected up to the uh, line in for the air pressure. And uh, while we're doing smoke machine testing, make sure the manometer is shut off here. And here's our nozzle. We're just going to disconnect it right now so that we can get some smoke going. What I like to do is open up the gas cap and that will get the smoke moving through the system quicker. As you can see, we have smoke coming out of the gas tanks. Not normally a good sign. Okay, so I see smoke coming out from under this fender. Let's just see what we see with the LED here. Well, I'm using the laser here and look at that. Absolutely, there is smoke here. Okay, here we are with the uh, LED light, not the, uh, not the laser. Now, the smoke is actually coming from this valve right here. You can see that really clearly. Okay, you can see the smoke for sure coming from this valve up here. This valve is supposed to be open. I'm just showing you how easily the smoke is detected using a laser light. Using the LED flashlight, you can see it's just blowing out of there. Now what you can do is power that valve up with a 9-volt battery, and it should close. That's the proper operation. Then you should see no smoke coming from it. 
what you can do if you're just testing the system here, the rest of it, you can just put a vice grip on that line. What you can, what you can do, you can just pinch the hose back here and that'll shut off the uh, air or the smoke going to that valve. Okay, to complete the test, we also need to make sure that this valve, which I believe is the purge valve, uh, is closed. It should be closed right now. The computer opens this uh, during, when the engine's running to draw in fumes from the gas tank and they go off here into the intake manifold to be burnt. So I've got the hose connected here and a nozzle in it. And we can see that our liquid level is perfect. It's exactly where it should be. So there's no concerns. This is sealed up. I see we have a good air leak right here at the bonnet to the throttle body. Well, we have some smoke leaking around this intake boot to the bonnet. You can check that right now. Is that clamp loose? No more smoke, so we know we've got a fix for sure. So, how are your welds? This one don't pass. <laughs>